So I'm Masahito, nice to meet you. The, I'm really happy to be here because the, it's uh, like three years or four years after the like, last my offline presentation, so I'm really excited to do this presentation in offline. Yeah, again, the, the today the, I'm Masahito. I'm, I'm, uh, today we will present Lines Journey, Road to 4 Million Cores in the Private Cloud. Sorry. The first, the, let me introduce myself. I'm Masahito, I'm a software engineer and manager. And I'm working for Line over three years. No. And Hi, this is Mitsuhiro Tanino. Nice to meet you. I'm also the soft senior software engineer working for the Line uh, about the three years. Thank you. Yeah, today in my, my part, I will explain the overview of Veruda. What is Veruda private cloud and what we, so we provide to the Line application developer. And also the we, uh, sorry, first, I will explain the history of the Veruda private cloud. And in the second half part, the Mitsuhiro will explain about one technical detail challenges we did. Okay, first, the Veruda is a private cloud platform to fall line. So the Veruda provides ES layer like virtual machine, NAT, load balancer, and DNS as a service, and also the like the path layers service, app engine, container, managed elastic search, and etc. So we provide this service for line application developer. <laughs> yep, and this is the scale of the Veruda and line infra scale, so in line infra. So right now in, in line, we totally have the all the over over 7,000, sorry, 70,000 hyper physical servers. And our peak of user traffic is over three tera BPS. And in this scale, the Veruda manages over 46,000 hyper uh, bare metal servers. And also the hypervisor, as a hypervisor, we manage over 7,600 hypervisors. And also, the virtual, over 100,000 virtual machines are running on these hypervisors as well. This is a service stack in the Veruda we provide. So first, in the bottom of the, as you can see, the bottom of the layer, we provide the ES functionality to line application developers, like identity, virtual machine, bare metal, network, and storages. And on top of these ES layers, we also man provide the managed services, like managed Kubernetes, managed MySQL, managed Redis, and et cetera. And in addition to this, the managed service, we provide the function as a service and the CI-CD pipeline using some open source power. Okay, so then I explain the quick overview of Beruda itself. From now on, I want to talk about the quick history of Beruda. Roughly speaking, we can divide the history of Beruda to three phases. First one is startup phase. Second, expansion phase. Third, new infra phase. So in each phase, we have different type of challenges and we solved lots of the different uh, problems. So the, I want to explain the, some specific the challenges and problem we solved in each period. In the first, the startup period. So at that time, from 2016 to 2019, we have we means line infra have one big problem. Infra provisioning takes too long times. For example, even though we provide the one virtual machine, it took two, over two, almost two weeks. 
So this is a communication flow before the builder. First, the application developer in line have to apply the infra request workflow to infra teams. And then this infra teams does some consultant to understand the request details. And once the infra team had understood the request details, they started to set up the infrastructure like virtual machine, set up storage, and etc. After that, the infra teams have the configuration, so they configured infrastructure to app teams, and the app team started, can start it to set up their applications. So this work entire scenario took long time. So to solve that, the Veruda solves open the private cloud with minimum API set to line application developers. So after the Veruda, actually app developer and infra teams could work individually. In the application developer side, first, they create a resource from API and GUI. And then Veruda provision the infrastructure resource automatically. And then after that, they start, they can start the application develop, uh, sorry, set up. And on the other hand, in the infra team side, the first, they, what they need to do is just first bulk resource management from hypervisor point of view, and next, the administration, the Veruda Cloud from API GUI. So at that time, the, there, are, there were some open stack technical challenges. First, the starts to have common open stack API to developers as soon as possible. Because the, at that time, it took the all infra provisioning took too long time. So to solve that problem, the faster API service is uh, important, was uh, important. So that's why the, at the moment, we focused on opening API set to the developers. So to do that, we minimize the API set from OpenStack to provide the line application developers, and also we developed lots of line original API set and its component, like bare metal API or API filters. And, yeah, oh, sorry, not and. The, after that, we had one culture change. So after we opened the Veruda, Veruda changes infrastructure resource characteristic from a facility to on-demand resource and API manageable resources. So from the app team's point of view, the less communication are required with infra teams. And infra team side, the, they can do the bulk resource management instead of the details and specific infra management. So this was the, our challenges and the culture change we did in the first period. Okay, then let's move on to the second period. The, in the expansion period, there was a problem again. So line developers had to install common middleware set by themselves. As I explained, app developer was able to provision their virtual machine. However, to develop the lines service, we of course need some middleware like database, managed Kubernetes, and etc. So the, by changing the infra management culture, we changed the infra preparation time from two weeks to 10 minutes. However, middleware preparation there was no change. As you can see, the app, even though app developer can prepare their infrastructure from the API, after that, app developer have to communicate to the DB administration teams 
to set up its database and understand, and the database teams also need to understand the middleware requirement and monitoring everything, monitoring and administration task. Yeah, to solve the problems, we know the solutions. So, Veruda solved open managed, open managed middleware ser service APIs. Like we did in the virtual machine or storage EAS layer, we did the same solution. Uh, we applied the same solutions to Veruda. First, we opened, Veruda opened the managed serv middleware service API, and then from app developer point of view, they can create database resource or Kubernetes resource, these kind of middleware resources from the API and ZUI. And Veruda set up automatically the database resources and also the any infra resources which is used as underlay resource. And from DBA team perspective, they only start to monitoring and DB administration task individually. Okay, this was a second, uh, this is the problems and what Veruda solved in the expansion period. And at that time, we had the another type of open stack technical challenges. First, the open stack, Opening managed services like managed MySQL, managed Kubernetes, triggered rapid growth of the OpenStack scale. So the beginning of the 2019s, the number of hypervisors are almost 1,400 hypervisors in to all regions. However, at the end of 2021, the total number of hypervisors was over 6,000 hypervisors. So this rapid growth required OpenStack deployment topology changes and tool changes to manage huge scale of clusters. And also second point, second problems we tried to solve was the some open, open source OpenStack API plugin was not matured in the large scale clusters. So for example, the Kubernetes has a CSI plugin to manage the persistent volumes. And the CSI plugin provides the Cinder support. However, the Cinder support um, calls uh, lots of OpenStack API call, even though all the task is not completed or uh, like in the middle of the progress. And the same situation was happened at the, for the Ansible Keystone user management plugin. So they doesn't care about over 20,000 users uh, inside the Keystone data or some things. Yeah, and we solved these problems one by one at the time during the expansion period. And we did one culture change at the times for the line developers. So line developers can now focus on developing service application itself. They don't need to focus on setting up their middleware infrastructure and everything by themselves right now. Okay, then the last the new infra period, it's still ongoing. So we had one problem right now. The problem was the infra management skill really rely on development teams, develop very dozen knowledges. So the, as I explained in the startup period, we developed some our custom API, like bare metal API or Nova and in Kubernetes as well. Because of that, the standard infra management tool, like Ansible or any like sophisticated tools, can't use the some Veruda API with default configurations. So some teams 
who has the Veruda knowledge can use the, these soft, sophisticated infra management tools to Veruda. On the other hand, there are some other teams which doesn't have the Veruda knowledge really do some traditional manual operation, even though we provide the API GUI. So as you, the, as you, uh, so as you can see, the figure says that the app developer use some resource provisioning tools like Ansible, and Class API, and things. However, as we, uh, because we provide bare metal API with our custom API, the resource provisioning tools cannot use these the APIs. So they have to do develop some plugins for this one or they have to do the manual operations. So to solve that, the solution is this one. Veruda solved straighten API stack in the Veruda to follow the de facto standard API set. So the, as you can, right now, the, we developed, we re -de developed some new features to support our infrastructure, but the, as you know, OpenStack is a one of de facto standard API set for Kubernetes or for any tools. So that's why right now all application developer can use the de facto API set to manage our lines infrastructures. Yeah. So the right now the one of the big our challenge is the revisit the OpenStack API philosophy. So OpenStack API philosophy, one of the OpenStack API philosophy is to provide unified API to manage some type of backend resources, like virtual machine, bare metal servers, and like any type of com companies like computing resources. So to realize that, the, we re in, renovated some API implementation to follow the philosophy. And by doing this, the, we did some cu one culture change in the line application development teams. So we solved two silo in the application development teams. So they can do, use the common management, uh, infra management tools to manage their applications right now. Okay, I quickly go through the, all the three phases. So let me like summarize the what we Veruda realized and the OpenStack challenges in this period. In the first startup period, the Veruda realized change infra communication style from the like talk style to the using API GUI. And from technical point of view, of course, open the ES API to the application developers. And in the expansion period, the Veruda realized change the middleware management style. Actually, this is almost the same with we did in the infra communication style, but we applied it onto the it to the middleware management layer. And also the OpenStack side challenges. So we support 500% rapid growth in the three years. It causes lots of the, our challenges from technical point of view. And last, the new infra period. So Veruda realized change, change or reduce the team knowledge gap between inside each development teams. And from OpenStack team side, the, we straighten the API stack to, avail, to be available for any tools. Okay, this is the last, last slide from my part. So we have some lesson learned in the, from the last seven years journeys. So first one, the culture change made drastic improvement. So even 
for example, that even though we provide the API or GUI as an API layer, if the infra teams will com inf infra teams communicate to the app development teams directly, it doesn't like reduce the communication cost. And second things, the technical bottleneck depends on the infra scale. So now the, this is a slide to review our history. So that's why it's easy to say, hey, we can, we could think about the any challenges we did recently. However, this is just a review. So that in the beginnings or in the middle phase, we cannot, uh, that there was a more different bottleneck. So the, there, yeah, there was different bottlenecks. So the each phases, we should focus on each problems. And last one is open source ecosystem has strong power. So right now we provide the standard API set to the application developer. So they can use everything and they can learn how to use it from not only the Veruda internal document, but, from, but also from the internet. It makes the, it help lots of the application developers from the like knowledge perspective. And from now on, I want to pass the mic to Tanino san to talk about one of the details, the technical details of our services. Okay, thank you, Masahito. So from now on, let me explain about the, one of our technical challenges. Uh, for the improvement of the biometric server management system in Beluda. So let me explain the background of the, uh, our, improve, our improvements. So as we explained, the Beluda provides uh, uh, two types of the resources. One is the virtual machine, and the second one is the biometric server. For the virtual machine, we use the OpenStack-based IaaS management, and uh, for the biometric, we previously supported an in-house server management system for the biometer. So we provide the uh, OpenStack API for the virtual machines, but the, we provided another API for the biometer server. And this is complicated for the builder server, uh, builder application developers. So as I explained, so the, from the developer perspective, they need to understand the completely different two types of the API to automate the virtual machine management and the biometric server operations. And also, for the builder operator's perspective, builder operator always need to develop the same functionalities for the both of the virtual machine management system and also the biometric uh, management system. This is also increase our management cost, development cost, and also the operation cost, uh, operating, operation cost for the beta operator side. Therefore, we started the new project to improve the beta server management system from the 2020. Uh, in, uh, in order to improve the beta system uh, management system, there are some of the requirements which were uh, came from the application developers and also the build operator sites. For the application developer, so we need to, our builder need to provide the unified API for multiple resources so that the uh, application developer can uh, automate the virtual machine resource and the biometric resources by using the OpenStack unified API. And also we need to provide the same level of functionalities for the virtual machine and the biometric server so that end user can utilize the same uh, series of the functionalities for the both VM management, uh, VM server, and the uh, biometric servers. And also one of the uh, requirement to provide the biometric server is uh, the application developer requires the pre, uh, private stock, which is pre-assigned to the uh, application developer's end user project. It means a dedicated biometric servers for the application developer team. And the uh, requirements from the beta operator side. So from our side, uh, we direct to reduce development, maintenance, or management cost as much as possible to operate the 
uh, not only for the virtual machine as well as the management for the delimited server system. And also, one another key point is that we have the strong hardware layer management system to manage the uh, IPMA layer and also the OS installation layer, which was already distributed to the multiple data center in multiple regions. So one request is we need to reuse this hardware management layer in our new improved bare metal server management system. Uh, from these requirements, what we can uh, complete it, uh, uh, this list shows uh, uh, what we did, uh, what we completed from the requirements. So first one, uh, in order to manage the bare metal server by using the open stack, we developed the Nova computer driver for bare metal server management. As you know, uh, OpenStack itself has uh, OpenStack Ironic project, which is, which is able to manage the uh, uh, bare metal server. But however, from the, our requirements, we already have the <coughs> IPMI management system and also the OS installation layer. That's why we didn't use the OpenStack Ironic, and instead we developed the uh, uh, Nova's computer driver to support the uh, bare metal server management. Also, the second point uh, from the requirements, so we need to provide the server stock management mechanism for end user. So we also implemented the stock management mechanism into the Nova. And third one, uh, in, order to this, uh, in order to deploy the bare metal server to be very high available environment, uh, application developer requires uh, HA purpose to distribute the bare metal server to multiple regions or multiple availability zone or multiple racks or et cetera. So we support this feature called the HA group. And the final one, uh, in order to deploy the bare metal management mechanism control plane site, we uh, prepare the CI-CD pipeline by using the algo CD. So let me explain these items one by one from the next section. So at first, uh, yeah, let me explain the, what is bare metal driver and the uh, architecture with the bare metal driver and also the deep dive to the features which we provide for the bare metal uh, management system. First one is uh, what is a bare metal computer driver? So the bare metal computer driver is open, as I explained, it's open stack Nova compute driver developed by Line. And the driver communicates with the physical server management system like the IPMI management system or OS installation system to build up the bare metal server. And uh, this driver supports uh, basic uh, open stack uh, functionalities like the create an instance, delete an instance, rebuild, start or stop, et cetera. And also by using the new bare metal server management system, user can, uh, build a user can create a new bare metal server from their pre-assigned stock. So right, right here shows, so the, you can see in the op, uh, OpenStack Nova layer, we implemented the bare metal driver, same, uh, same as libvirt driver. So from the application developer perspective, they can use uh, both virtual machine and the bare metal server by using the unified OpenStack API. So this figure shows a more detailed deployment architecture of the uh, Nova computer for bare metal, bare metal computer driver. So as you can see, center of the, this figure, so this shows the Belda Kubernetes service. So in, uh, in the Belda team, so we deployed the Nova service on top of the Kubernetes environment. So for example, Nova API, Nova scheduler, Nova conductor, they are running on top of the Kubernetes environment as a state of the set or a deployment resources. And uh, Redbox shows the, this is newly developed the uh, Nova Compute for bare metal. We also deployed the uh, Nova Compute service to manage the bare metal physical server, which is running on the build a Kubernetes environment as a deployment. And uh, yeah, bottom box shows the bare metal server, which is managed by the, uh, this a Nova computer driver, and the uh, right box shows the uh, uh, existing uh, physical server management system, like the 
IP mobile management system, IP mobile management system, and also the OS installation system. So let me explain how these components works together to build uh, build up a uh, server instance. So you can see the uh, steps in here. So at first, a user make a request to create a new biometric uh, instance via the dashboard. It's shown here. Then once the uh, end user uh, try to create the biometric instance from the uh, builder UI, the API request go to the Nova layer, Nova API. And uh, some operation happens inside the Nova and uh, one of the Nova, uh, one of the Nova compute is picked by the Nova scheduler. Then Nova compute start to handle the uh, biometric instance creation flow. During the uh, instance creation flow, Nova compute uh, at first try to make a request to Pixie boot the biometric server. Then after that, the Nova compute biometric driver also make a request to uh, create an OS installation task to the OS installation system. Then, uh, after that, the OS installation happens for the biometric server automatically, and uh, after taking 10 minutes or something, the no, uh, biometric server launched, then uh, Nova computer driver reports the instance creation is completed to the Nova layer. That is the very, uh, how I say, summary of the biometric server creation mechanism by using our newly developed the driver. This is the uh, uh, instance management view for the builder developer. So this uh, page shows the instance list. And uh, as you can see from the top five, uh, sorry, very small character, but the server type shows the test in three small dot metal. And the dot metal flavor shows that uh, they are the biometric server. So in this project, uh, the, there are five biometric server and uh, they are currently spawning status. And also, bottom three, they show, these servers show the virtual machine, like the CPU, one CPU, one gigabyte, some of the size of the SSD. So from the end user perspective, they can manage the both biometric server and the uh, uh, virtual machine by using the one instance view. And they can create any of the virtual machine or biometric server by clicking the create instance button, they, they can choose any of the flavor which is assigned to this project. Okay, then from now on, so I'd like to explain the more deep dive de detail of the uh, features which is, provide, which is provided by the uh, biometric server management system. First one is stock management, second one is HA group support, and the third one is deployment procedure of the biometric driver. So, as for the stock management system, we use uh, Nova's host aggregate mechanism. And uh, we suppose uh, two types of the stock management, uh, stock types. One is public, and the uh, second one is private. As for, uh, left figure shows the public stock for the all project. So public means the public. So any of the project, like the project one or project two, project X, any of the project uh, belong to the builder system uh, could consume the, uh, this type of the flavor uh, biometric server if there is stock in the host aggregate. And the uh, right side shows the uh, private stock, which is dedicated to the project 10. In this case, this project 10 has uh, two types of uh, flavor. One is N3 small dot metal, and the second one is N3 dot large metal. And each flavor, uh, host, uh, each host aggregate, has uh, multiple diameter server. So in the project 10, they can consume pre-assigned stock whenever they need to create a biometric server from the pre-assigned stock. And also these pre-assigned stock to the BM, uh, project 10 cannot be utilized by the, any of the other projects. That means uh, they are the dedicated stock for the project 10. And uh, this shows uh, all stack aggregate uh, show command list for the uh, project 10. So the, we uh, associate to the uh, host which is pre-assigned to the uh, project, uh, specific project, like 
ZZ1 or ZZ2 or ZZ3, they are the associate, assigned, pre, pre assigned stock for the uh, UUID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 project. So, yeah. And also, in order to uh, request a pre assigned stock from the end user project, end user can make a request uh, from the builder UI. Uh, and uh, when the user makes a request of the private stock, the workflow is automatically created and the workflow will be arrived to the build operator side, then uh, build operator validate if the end user request to pre-assign the build server is suitable for their purpose or not. Then once we approve the uh, workflow, the uh, assign stock will be automatically assigned to the end user project, then they can consume the build server from build UI. Okay, next is HA group support. So, uh, in order to provide the application, Lines application to very high available, so the, uh, they require the uh, location-based availability. So, Builder supports the uh, three types of the high availability functionality. One is multiple region, second one is the multiple availability zone, and the third one is server lack level failure domain. And the first one, multiple region, and the second one, multiple availability zone, end user can uh, choose any of the region or availability zone when they make a request from the stock workflow. And third one, uh, server lack level failure domain, this is uh, available by using the uh, build dashboard when user try to create a new build instance. And the HA group supports uh, some of the policies like the hard, soft, and uh, non-policy. Uh, non or if the end user choose the hard policy, the sub, uh, multiple server must be distributed to the multiple failure domains. It means the sub, uh, physical server must be distributed to the multiple server lack because uh, if, if the one server lack have the power unit failure or the switch failure, that whole server lack will go down. So in order to avoid such kind of the issue, uh, when user choose hard policy, the server must be distributed to the multiple server lacks. And the second one is the soft policy. In this case, uh, this case, try to uh, distribute the multiple uh, server to the multiple failure domain as much as possible, but the, even though it is not possible to distribute uh, server, uh, parameter server creation does not fail. And uh, this is a build uh, dashboard UI when user create uh, to new instance, they can choose the HA group like the policy no or policy hard or policy soft from the UI. And uh, this is a result when I try to choose the hard policy and they created the five parameter server. In that case, as you can see in the right side, so the R something shows the lack number. So these five parameter servers were uh, distributed to the multiple racks because uh, I choose the hard policy to uh, deploy the new parameter servers. So end user can uh, understand where is the server is located in the data center region level or data center level and also the rack level. And the final one is the deployment procedure of the VMware driver. Sorry, a little bit uh, uh, complicated figure, but uh, we uh, use uh, uh, GitHub and Algo CD in order to deploy the VMware server management system control plane side. So in the uh, Git, uh, GitHub side, so we store the uh, VMware server physical hardware information like the IP address server MAC, IP, MAC address or NIC MAC address, et cetera. And uh, when the VMware operator try to register the new server into Git, Algo CD automatically uh, watch and sync, uh, start to sync the VMware server information into the builder, uh, builder Kubernetes environment. And after that, uh, the Algo CD uh, try to start the uh, Ansible job, which runs uh, uh, Kubernetes Manifest, which deploys the Kubernetes manifest, deployment manifest or config map into the uh, build Kubernetes environment. 
and also this job try to register the biometric server information to the host aggregate information like the uh, flavor, etc. So this is a brief summary of the how we manage the current uh, biometric server uh, biometric server system by using the uh, GitHub and also the better Kubernetes service. Yeah, that's all for our presentation. Thank you for your attention. If you have a question, please go ahead. Yes, uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, are you going to make the slides available? Oh. The, the slides. Are you ah, going to make slide will approach. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, let me ask. Just start with your uh, Thank you for presentation. Uh, I would like to ask two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first, how long will it take to deploy bare metal instance? Uh, ah, yes. Yeah. So, for the bare metal deployment procedure, so the, it contains the hardware boot sequence and also the OS installation phase. So, in total, it almost takes uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes to boot up hardware and also the installation OS. Ah, thank you. Um, if you do any uh, uh, sorry, second question is how often will uh, bare metal instance will be deployed? Uh, oh. Same frequency as a VM instance or not so much? Yeah, we did not measure the how often the bare metal uh -huh. creating. So, but the, so currently, so we support the more than thirty six thousand bare metal servers. So, very often the end user try to create a bare metal server by mm -hmm. using the OpenStack or the previous our in house bare metal server management system. So, yeah. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Please care. Thank you. Thank you for presentation. So, uh, first, one question is, uh, uh, why user want to use a bare metal for your environment? Uh, bare metal, uh, bare metal has some specific hardware or something. Uh, so, I think the main reason why the end user try to use a bare metal server is one reason is uh, very, they need to. Their, their requirement requires uh, very low latency or also the, when the user use a virtual machine, so the one, hyper, one hypervisor hosts the multiple servers and sometimes it causes a noisy neighbor situation. So in order to very strict server or application management, uh, our application developers still uh, yeah, to, would like to use the bare metal server itself. It eliminates the noisy neighbor also the it can reduce the latency. Especially for the Redis server or a database server, they yeah, you try to you try to use the bare metal server for their purpose. Thank you. No. Okay, thank you. So it seems the time. So yeah, thank you for enjoying the session.